Welcome back to Razmafsan TV. Today I'm going to talk about two Shamshirs which belonged to Karim Khan Zand. And I had the honor to analyze and to measure these two Shamshirs uh, from museums of Iran. These are truly his Shamshirs and are in royal collections. And I had the honor to put, have them in my hand, measure them, analyze them for my book, Arms and Armor from Iran, the Bronze Age to the end of the Qajar period. I have really had the privilege of analyzing many items of Iranian kings, which I presented in my book, but these two hold a special place. And I'm going to explain why. If you go to Shiraz or if you go to Iran, Many kings from the Islamic period of Iran are really controversial for different reasons. We all know that kingdom or ruling a country, you cannot just say <laughs> they did always good things. Of course they didn't. But one ruler stands out as a just one from the Islamic period of Iran. And this is Karim Khanizan. As a matter of fact, he never called himself a king. He called himself Vakil a representative of Iranian people. He brought Iran to a period of stability and many good things are associated with him. If you go and read about the Qajar Chronicles, they are not very fond of Zand period. The reason, there are different reasons for it. One of the reasons, I don't want to go into history, but one of the reasons is clearly because the Qajars looked at themselves or considered themselves as the, as true heirs of Safavid period. And of course, Afsharid, Nader Shah, and later on Zans were not the representatives. Qajar tribe was one of the most powerful tribes in Safavid army. And as a matter of fact, um, we know that uh, Karim Khan Zans suppressed one of the uprising of the Qajar and even sent Agha Muhammad Khan Qajar, he, whom he didn't treat actually in a bad way, we have, but he sent him to Tehran, which back then was a village. Uh, and then uh, also different things, I don't want to go into this, but we will see later that Agha Muhammad Khan Qajar was really angry and how he took revenge. And we are going to talk about this later on, but um, let's go back and I'm going to share now my files with you. And then in this files, we are going to see what uh, we uh, I'm talking about that. Let me just share the file. Exactly, that's the file. Now I'm going to put it in the presentation uh, modus. Okay, let me just go in the beginning. Yes. Um, these are uh, Karim Khan Zand uh, and I published in my book. So we are, I'm going to use, uh, I'm going to use the findings from my book mainly and also published an article. My book is in English, as you know, and also I published an article in um, French, in a French magazine, uh, Revue, de, Le Revue de Tehran, Tehran, and these are, so I'm mixing it up from both my book and uh, this journal, which is, by the way, very good journal uh, as far as culture and academics is concerned, but okay. Karim Khan Zand, from 1751 to 1779, he was a general of Nader Shah Afshar. He ruled Iran, uh, but more, I mean, the parts of Iran and also, but Khorasan was not under his rule. But then again, I leave it to my colleagues in history and they can talk about it much better than I do because I am going to concentrate on his Shamshirs. He was the most humane, humane ruler of Iran, <clears throat> excuse me, during Islamic era and period. This is my book, Arms and Armor from Iran, as you can see it here. And uh, there are two Shamshirs. One is in uh, today's Pars Museum in Shiraz, which I went there and analyzed. I would like to thank the curator back then. He was very nice to me. And uh, because this uh, Shamshir is portrayed on the grave of Karim Khan Hassan. So they closed the museum so I took, could take it out and uh, measure it. And the one below is another Shamshir. 
of Karim Khan Zand, which is kept in a military museum in Sadabad complex, Tehran, Sadabad Palace, Tehran. Both of them are Shamshis on the heavy side, and I'm going to describe why. Let me concentrate on the first one in Shiraz. Here, uh, we need to take a look at that. And uh, let me just see that, yes, exactly. When Karim Khan Zand died, actually, when Karim Khan Zand died, um, he was actually buried in uh, Shiraz first, right? He was buried in Shiraz first. And um, then uh, he, when he died, later on, when Agha Muhammad Khan Qajar came into power, he ordered Rahman Khan Yuzbashi to exhume the remains of Karim Khan Zand and rebury his remains in the Golestan Palace in Tehran. And it, they, I mean, they say that if you go also to the museum in Golestan Palace or in Pars Museum, they have also this uh, anecdote that he had them uh, buried, reburied the remains named in Golestan Palace, Khalvat Karim Khani, under the stairs where he could walk over it. Um, every day. They did that, this transfer of his remains and bones in 1791. In, uh, during the reign of Reza Shah Pahlavi, in 19, um, who ruled Iran from 1925 to 1941, in 1926, the descendants of Karim Khan Zand went to Reza Shah Pahlavi in 1926, one year after he came into power and offered him the Shamshir of Karim Khan Zand. That's the first Shamshir, which is now on his grave, portrayed and uh, displayed, excuse me, displayed on his grave in Pars Museum of Shiraz. This is the Shamshir on top here. And you can see it here as well. So they offered him this and uh, asked him to remove the remains, to have the remains of Karim Khan Zand removed from there and be placed and give and he could give them to them so he can they can bring the remains back to Shiraz or wherever. Reza Shah immediately accepted this. First he accepted the Shamshir and ordered his court minister Taymur Taj and engineer Mohandas Sharif Sadeh to exhume the remains of Karim Khan Zand and give the remains and bones back to his descendants. Here you see Reza Shah, you see, I mean of course the military I mean, officer he was, and now he's the king. And you see one of them, uh, of his, uh, maybe it's Taymur Tash, I'm not, or um, I don't, cannot really tell if it's Taymur Tash or is the Mohandas Sharif Zadeh, who's holding the Shamshir in his hand. Right? So it's one, this Shamshir, and um, you see there are two of them. I cannot really tell you which one it is. We assume this, definitely one of these two, but uh, we assume that's the one which is portrayed in, um, um, uh, displayed, I always say portrayed, sorry, displayed in Karim Khan, in Pars uh, Museum in Shiraz. When they gave the remains back to the descendants of Karim Khan Zand, there were different alternatives. And there are not many Iranian scholars differ on that, uh, um, where they really brought the remains. Some say that the alternatives were to be buried next to Shah Soleimani Safavid and Shah Sultan Hussein in Rome. Some of them said uh, that to Malayir, to his uh, birthplace, and some said to Shiraz, where he used to be buried, where the Pars Museum is now uh, located. And actually, most uh, scholars say that's where the remains are. If you go now to Shiraz, the Pars Museum, you can see the tomb and the grave of Karim Khan Sand, and they say that his remains were brought back there. So a very sad story, actually, right? Especially story of a man, which the Pars Museum keeps you know, saying that, who is really respected. And I need to say that after the revolution of Iran, um, many uh, streets with names of kings of Iran were changed, but not Karim Khan Zand. I just want to stress that because people of Shiraz love him and wrote Fali Khan Zand later on. But this is another story and his wars against Agha Muhammad Khan Qajar, but because these dynasties really respected in Iran, right? Um, and uh, need to mention that. 
This is the uh, sort which you can see it here. This is the first shamshir, and this shamshir is the shamshir which is on display in Pars Museum in Shiraz. I remember when I uh, um, when I first uh, went there and uh, analyzed this sort. You see that um, this is in Pars Museum. The museum inventory number, the museum inventory number is uh, three hundred twenty six three two six, and you see this is made of crucible steel patterned crucible steel. Unfortunately, it was, um, the pattern is beautiful, but they didn't really take care of it. You know the story, it was in private hand and given here and there, gave as, been given as a present. But you see this famous gold inlaying on both Shamshir of Karim Khan which says, in tikh kashir falakash nakhjiras, Shamshir vakil on shah kishwar giras. پیوسته کلید فت کلید فت و کلید فت دارد در دست آن دست که بر قبضه این شمشیر است it says this sword which is meant to hunt the celestial lion is the shamshir of the vakil the representative the king who conquers countries he will always keep the key to victory in his hand only if that person or one holds the handle of this shamshir in his hand. The Persian sounds beautiful, in my opinion, much more beautiful. In tikh kashir falakash nakhjiras, shamshir vakil on shahi kishwar giras. Peyvaste kli de fat darat dadas, on das ke bar qabze in shamshiras. The length of this sword is 100.5 centimeters, and weight without scabbard is 970 grams. So you see for a shamshir, which is a very fast weapon made of beautiful crucible steel, is quite on a heavy side, but we have even the other shamshir of Karim Khan is even heavier. Lots of, uh, lots of images are there. Lots of things are, uh, excuse me, lots of inscriptions, also, also decorations are in it, but especially inscriptions. A combination of Persian poem on the blade beside ones, and also on Ohanag, Tang Bands, which says, the famed in a, an Arabic combination of Persian poems and Arabic prayers. It says, Laf in Arabic, La Fata illa Ali, La Saif illa Zulfavar. There is no brave young man or man. But Ali, there is no sword, no sword but Zulfagar. And then also on Ahanag on the other side, you don't see it here, says, Surati Gardat Mujassam Fat Guyat Ashgar. A face will disappear and victory becomes visible. This is from the French article, so you know, I wrote, so if you see the French, don't worry. So I translated into English for you. Again, Surati Gardat Mujassam Fat Guyat Ashgar. The face uh, becomes apparent, emerges, and victory becomes visible or gets near, closer. Then we can see also on the Borchak, on the cross guard, there are also lots of information and there are attributes of God. Ya in Arabic, Ya Kafi al Muhammad. Oh, you who are sufficient in everything. Ya Qazi al-Hajat. Ya Qazi al-Hajat. Oh, uh, fulfiller of wishes. Uh, my ap apologies for my bad Arabic accent to our Ara Arab viewers of this channel. So I speak different languages, but not Arabic. I can read it and translate it. But uh, so my apologies for that. And then it says, uh, Allahumma salla ala Muhammad. But Ali, right? Uh, the clemency of God be upon Muhammad and his, and the elected, selected, and his family. We have also written Ali, referring to the first um, Imam of Shiites, or the fourth Caliph, among Sunnis. 
So we talked about it, Surati Gardat Mujassam Fat Guyad Oshkor, we talked about it. Then we said, okay, Ali, then you see now look at this. This is the Shiite uh, thing. Then Al Hassan, the second Imam, is written in the Bolcha. Al Hussein, the third Imam. Al Hussein, and it goes, Sallallahu Alaihi Sallallahu Allah, right? Salutation to both. Ali al Ibad, the, the fourth Imam of Shiites. Imam Bagher is written, the, the fifth Imam. Imam Jafar is Sadiq, the sixth Imam is written. Imam Qasim, the seventh Imam is written. Ali ibn Musa al Reza. Um, uh, yes. Okay, Imam Qasim was the seventh, I'm sorry. Ali ibn Musa al Reza, uh, the eighth Imam. Al Shafi, right? Uh, then is written. Then the next Imam, Muhammad al Taghi, then, then, then ninth, the Yes, uh, ninth Imam, ex exactly, the ninth Imam. Al-Hadi, the guide, which is the, the tenth Imam. Al-Askari is written, the eleventh Imam. And Al-Hujjat, right, is the, uh, Al-Hujjat is written, also Al-Mahdi, referring to the twelfth Imam of the Shiite, also, which is called and written here, Sahib al-Zama. So some Imams have two titles written there and all of them are on the cross card. So I repeat, Ali, Al-Hassan, al Hussein. then say salutations be upon them. Then it goes, Ali al Abad, the fourth. Then go Imam Bagher, the fifth. Imam Jafar al-Sadiq, the sixth. Imam Qasim, the seventh. Ali ibn Musa al-Reza, uh, the eighth. Al-Shafi, also referring to him again. Then Muhammad al uh, Muhammad al Taghi, the, the ninth, right? Al Hadi, the guide, um, the tenth. Al Askari, the eleventh. Al Hujjat, again, uh, referring to the twelfth Imam. Al Mahdi, again to the twelfth Imam. Sahib al Zaman, the owner of time, twelfth Imam. Then you see that. The names of uh, 14th uh, Chardah Ma'asum, we say in Persian, 14th infallibles are written, which are again on, also on the cross guard. Now, the order is look at that. What's written? Muhammad, Messenger, Prophet Muhammad. Then we go Fatima, Ali is written, Hassan, Hussein, Ali ibn Ibad, Imam Baghir, Jafar Sadiq, Imam Qasim. Ali ibn Musa al-Riza, Muhammad al-Taghi, al-Hadi, al-Askari, al-Mahdi. Right? So you see that, how beautifully are written on this bolchak, which is actually made of crucible steel. You see that next to the inscriptions on the side, all these things which I mentioned it to you, Persian poem, also all these Arabic prayers and names, and the respect to infallibles, 12th Imam, and, uh, and then in the middle is uh, capped blank, so you can see the crucible still coming out again, Persian tradition, right? This is then the second Shamshir. This Shamshir is kept in the Military Museum Tehran or Sadabad Palace Museum, and these are gold inlaying there, and now this becomes interesting. First of all, this is in museum inventory number 447, 447, and it has a beautifully written gold inlaying uh, maker's mark or Smith mark, Amale Ali Asghar Swami, 1189. Now take a look at that. 1189 is in Hijra. Ejri Qamari, as we say in Persian, stands for 775. This is four years before Karim Khanazan died. And we talked about Asadullah Kalba Ali, many people signed with that, also dated it. You see, this is one of those few smiths that you can find. Few swords made by him, royal swords, but always the same handwriting, as far as I have found, right? I'm not saying they didn't imitate, but you see that 
imitation of this, although the blade of this, the pattern, because these were not in private hands, they were always in royal collection. This one is in royal collection of Nasser bin Shah Qajar, which was given to um, uh, Danishkade Afsari uh, Military uh, University and or Officers University. And then later on, as I mentioned it before, were in my Asadullah and Kalbali, then they were divided Military Museum of Tehran, Shiraz in Afibabad, and in Palace of Reza Shah, Bandar Anzali. These are kept really, I have never seen any blades kept that well as in these museums, military museums, not in private hands. And then um, you can see the beautiful, the thing is now for this, this is a very heavy blade, heavy, well-balanced, but really you know that those of you who are swordsmen and practice, not know and do lots of like you know, combos for an extended period of time, this blade weighs 1160 grams without scabbard and it is 1.4 compare it to the other one the other one was also not uh under you know you see that it was 970 also heavy but this one is heavier and that one is 100 a bit more than 100 and this one is 104 so this one is even longer a bit and definitely heavier there's a really beefy good blade then again, you see here the same poem, which I mentioned it before. In Tir Keshire Falakesh Nachjiras, Shamshire Vakil, on Shahi Keshwar Giras, Pevaste Kli de Fat Dorat Dardas, on Das Kebal Kabse in Shamshiras. Do you see this um, uh, uh, flower? You see that very often on swords from Zan period, also on scabbards, on decorations, but we go into that decorative methods uh, later on, but you see it very often. So it says again, this sword, which is meant to hunt the celestial lion, is the Shamshir of the Vakil, the representative, the king who conquers countries. He will always keep the key to victory in his hand, only if one holds the handle of this Shamshir in his hand. And also you see that we have other inscriptions, right? Like on the scabbard fitting, right? On the scabbard fittings, yes. Which says, look at this, Intiq Khadive Jahanastu Basha. This blade is the king of the world and will remain so. You see that beautiful in Persian. Um, that being said, okay, then um, the scabbards, both of them are of Kimoh, Sagari, right? And both of them, all the dimensions are in my book. Both of them or more descriptions are in my book, Arms and Armor from Iran. If you wish to buy the book, please go to our web shop. We have special um, offers there. And uh, there you can see that. And those of you who are makers of swords, especially if you make crucible steel, even if not, you make modern steel, I would really encourage you to make this shamshir, both of them. This is one thing I would like to ask you to do that because this is important and uh, for uh, representing this uh, just ruler of Iran. I will put it here next to each other. You see that under right side of this uh, slide you see that their gold inlaying are written right top down right so they are vertically written the pawn and on the one which is in pars museum on the left they are written horizontally right and this is um beautiful uh to take a look at this the one in pars museum which is on the left side is not uh, uh, signed with the uh, uh, Smith mark. And again, I read that for you. In Tir Keshire Falakesh Nachjiras, Shamshire Vakil on Shahi Keshwar Giras, Pevaste Kli de Fat Dorat Dardas, on Dast Kebal Kabze in Shamshiras. I gave already the translation for this. And the sword, which is on the right side, has Amale Ali Asghar Swani, 1189. So that was that was uh, my presentation on 
these beautiful sorks. Let me just get out of that. Um, I hope you enjoyed this and these two shamshirs. During my years of research, I had a really, or I was honored to have all these things in my hand. Just recently, I was talking to a, one of my fans and followers who just said, oh, he thought Sassanid swords were light. I said, no, they're not light, actually. You know, this comes when you do not handle original things. Nothing is more important to have original items in your hands, especially swords which belong to kings and rulers of the country. I had the privilege and support of Iranian museums and to analyze these things, which I really appreciate, the cultural ministry. These are very important to take into consideration because this for us, for uh, analyzing history is an extremely important thing. There is only so far you can go by looking at pictures or by having access to some mediocre items, right? Nothing beats up when you have the best made blades in your hands and measure them and share with this word. And I hope um, through my, all my eight books I have published so far and more than eight, uh, more than, sorry, 189 uh, print articles. So I could have contributed to the knowledge and for our understanding of Iranian arms and armor. I will continue soon. A new book of mine will be published. Actually, next year, I have a plan to two books. Stay tuned. Please support my research. My research is always privately funded, and I would really appreciate that you support my research by going to the web shop and uh, do that. Please uh, subscribe to our channel and uh, ask any com uh, anything you have by making a comment, like our videos, and thank you for being here and have a nice day. Thanks.